All right, let's replace this motor here. I, uh, I'm just going to take two screws off the finisher here and roll this finisher out of the way so I can bring a chair here and sit. My game plan is to take this off and then I think there are, there's another board behind this that I need to remove until I get in there to where I can actually get to the motor. So I haven't done this before, let's, let's do it. All right, we're in here at least. Got a couple hard drives over here. And I'm not entirely sure if I need to take these boards out individually or if I could just take this whole entire unit out. Okay, so I'm gonna take a couple pictures of this with my camera and then it's just take this harness out uh, disconnect all this and pull it out the top, disconnect all these connectors out the bottom, and then we should be able to access more screws to take the whole unit out. Okay, that was, it looked intimidating, but it really wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I had all the wiring harnesses off, and I just took all the screws out on this side. I think, I think these screws here will be on this side, and then this whole unit should come out. Maybe a screw up here, and then, and then we're in. But I've only been working at this for like 10, 15 minutes. That wasn't too bad. All right, here's my my motor, and this one here is the one that spins the toner bottle. So that's what I need to replace. I don't know what that one is. Why do they got to have two of the same right next to each other just to scare me? I'm gonna replace this one. Hopefully that's the one I gotta do. That would make sense. Cause all your toner bottles are on the other side here and there's clutches for each color. And then it gets conveyed up. And then these motors here convey the toner. Is this, that's not waste toner. Waste would be on the other side. That might be paper feeding, maybe? I don't know. Let's swap this out and see what she does. That ain't right. That's the wrong motor. Either they sent me the wrong motor or I ordered the wrong motor. So this is gonna have to wait. I just looked it up and they sent me the wrong motor. So it's not the one pictured or anything, incorrect number, incorrect everything. So I'm gonna print a return label and ship this thing back and get the right one on the way. Okay, I might not have a motor problem. I've been thinking about this and I looked up remote to figure out what I did and ICP3 is the one that I soldered and that's all for clutches. So I'm thinking it was a clutch problem and not a motor problem. So the motor should be fine uh, maybe it's good that that person sent me the wrong motor uh, because I got a refund on that, but I think it's a clutch issue. So let's uh, let's look at those clutches. There's really no way to t test these, so I might just clean them out, put them back in, or maybe maybe switch around the colors to see if the the problem uh, goes to another color because typically it's the magenta that uh, is runs out and won't uh, replenish, so 
maybe it is just dirty and the clutch is not functioning correctly. So maybe I'll just blow it out and put it all back together and we'll hope for the best. Uh, certainly can't hurt. Might waste some time doing that, but yeah, I think I might try that. While I have this apart, um, I do, I'm just going to test the the resistance of each clutch to see if there's an obvious difference um, to see if maybe one has some sort of internal issues so uh, let's do that here okay so the magenta one point two eight six then we'll do yellow point two eight three Cyan is 0.284, so there is more resistance on the magenta one. I don't know if that's just coincidence or what. 0.285 on black. I mean, they're, they're all about the same. I was also looking for any type of gear damage, and everything seems to be turning freely. There is There are little plastic shavings, which I doubt... Uh, mean that it's failed because everything does turn freely it could just be weak clutches I mean I saw that on the C6500 I don't feel real confident about this but the reality is, is I can't prove that that motor is bad uh, I should probably experiment in the IO check mode maybe I'll do that if I can't if nothing gets better after I put it all back together. Okay, so I'm not sure where we are in the process, but I'm just going to start talking about what has happened. And I am relatively sure it's not the motor because that's on a different ICP. And the ICP that blew that I repaired is the ICP for the clutches. Now, I checked bushings and everything back here. Everything seems to be moving fine. And I'm trying to think of how the clutches could be bad. Maybe they were just dirty. That's what I'm going to go for for now. Uh, I've tested the continuity of all the clutches. Uh, the resistance of all the clutches are about the same. Uh, probably good to replace them, but I'm thinking maybe that whatever uh, causes the friction in there, maybe it's just worn out or maybe it was dirty. I've had that on previous clutches, so I'm just going to blow it all out, put it all back together, uh, and then if that doesn't work, I'm going to assume it's that I need to replace the clutches, but then I want to do some more testing in the I.O. check mode and actually try and put my finger on exactly what is going wrong. That's what we're going to try. It doesn't take me too long to put it all back together. It's a shame to put it back together and not actually replace anything, but I figured just cleaning it out would probably be at least a step in the right direction. Okay, so I put it all back together. Bunch of leftover parts. You don't need all those. Man, there are, you really need like half as many screws in the back of that thing. I'm not sure if this was actually fixed or not. Maybe it was just dirty clutches. I have toner that will be empty soon, but it seems to be advancing. I don't know. I'll just start printing some stuff and we'll see how long it lasts. It works. So I just replaced the yellow toner and it's all running fine. So I'm beginning to wonder if nothing was wrong to begin with and maybe I just wasn't thinking and I saw it needed toner and I thought that something was going wrong. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff going on so I could see myself doing something stupid like that, but cleaning that out back there isn't gonna hurt anything. That's great. I'm gonna run the doors off this thing this week. I'm going to consider that fixed. It's been a week, and this has been running all week. So has the 1070, and this 3070 as well, as you can see. Been busy for quite a while, and I've been buying other stuff too. I put a hurting on my toner supply. I probably went through six or eight, maybe, this week. We're getting low on yellow, but I got four of those that'll be here today that'll replenish that, and then I have a bunch more coming next week. The stuff I've been ordering on Alibaba 
it takes like three weeks to get here, but it's on its way and it'll be here in I think 10 days. So that's all right. I just put my last 12 by 18 60 pound text in here. I can't buy any more, but I have 10 skids of 60 pound text, all folio sheets. So I just need to cut down, which is a bummer, but that's all right. I can keep on printing at least. I also wanted to mention a few things I'm trying to save toner is using the toner save feature on the Fiery when you send your print jobs. I don't know if that works or what it does, but I figure it can't hurt as long as the print quality still looks good. I generally, I do see kind of less vibrancy on those prints, uh, but as long as it looks good to me, I'm gonna do that. And, uh, and hopefully that helps me make my toner stretch as far as I can. Uh, but uh, what else am I gonna do? Oh, sometimes lightning prints, making sure you calibrate stuff uh, so you're not printing stuff too dark uh, or darker than it needs to be uh, will, often, will also help. So I'm doing that as well. well. Thanks for watching. I have paper to cut down because these printers are hungry and I gotta keep them fed. So uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.